Hey guys, welcome back to the Exam Vision YouTube channel. My name is Ellen and today I'm gonna to be talking about how to improve your grade in Leaving Cert Maths. Now, I did already make a video on how to get a H1 in Leaving Cert Maths, but for most people, that is just not achievable and I completely understand that. So I wanted to make a separate video that just helps people in general to improve their grade and just some key tips and tricks to remember in the exam. Because although we all want H1s in maths, it is not achievable for a majority of the people. And so if you're just wanting to improve your grade, this is the video for you. The first thing I'm gonna be talking about is attempting every question. I cannot stress how important this is. There's always going to be some questions in the maths paper that no matter how great you are at maths, you're not gonna understand. This could be one or two questions for some people or more than that for others. But for every question, even if you read it and you're like, what, what is that? Please, please attempt every question. Because if you feel that way about that question, most people will likely feel the same. And so that means the marks for that question is not if you get the question right, you get full marks. A lot of the time, between 50 and 60% of the marks for those hard questions are going for like writing down a formula. You have a log tables. Read the question, see what it's about, look through the log tables and see what kind of formula you'd throw in there. And just write the formula down. Just write something down. And so this is the kind of thing I'm talking about and how to improve your grade. Because those marks, even though you had no idea what the question was about, you got 60% of the marks. And so they add up throughout the entire paper and will improve your grade. So please do not leave a single question blank on that paper. It is just a recipe for disaster. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is reading the questions extremely carefully. This is always a big issue for me, especially when you're under stress and when you open up the paper and you're scanning through everything. Take a second, take a breather, you do not wanna rush reading any of these questions. You might miss out what the measurement is and think it's meters and it's actually centimeters. It might be the most basic question and you get the answer right, but if you don't write down the right measurement, that's marks gone. I know it is such a simple thing, but honestly, it is so easy, especially when you're under pressure and stressed and under time pressure as well, that you will miss out something in the question and you're gonna be so confused and you're gonna be stuck on that question for ages and then 20 minutes later you see you miss something and it's just been a whole waste of time. So please read everything slowly and carefully, highlight parts of the questions that are important and when you're trying to figure it out and solve it, still be continuously reading that question because you do not want to miss anything because that can be what you either get full marks in an easy question or you don't. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is writing neatly. I know we all have our own handwritings and some people's are hard to read and some are not, but if the examiner who's correcting your paper can't read anything, you're going to lose marks. You might have gotten the question completely right, you did all of the solving and you showed everything, but if they can't get where you're coming from and understand what you've been writing down, that's instant marks gone. Label where your rough work is, try and write as cleanly as you can and as comprehensively as you can. So if anyone is reading this paper, they can read what you've written. Especially for your rough work and where you're trying to solve, that's where most of your marks come from. And so if that is just jibber jabber and you're rushing and you're stressed, you are losing all of those extra marks you could have gotten. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is knowing your calculator. Please, for the love of God, I've talked about this before, do not get a new calculator before the exam. I know you're like, oh, what if the calculator breaks mid-exam? You wanna get a new one the week before, that is the worst thing you could do. If your calculator is old and worn, it's February right now, go and get a new one now so that you can learn how to use it. I know so many people in the exam that put up their hand and didn't actually know how to do something on the calculator, which is such a waste of time and it should not be happening. That will make you so stressed in the exam if you have bought a new calculator and you can't figure out how to do the most simple thing on it. So please don't do that. You should know that calculator like the back of your hand. So it's February now, go and buy a new one if you think you're gonna need one. If you bought one at the start of the year, you're fine. You don't need a new one. But if it's old, I get it. Go and get a new one now. Just do not under any circumstances get a new one before the exam. Even if it's the same make, a lot of the times there's different versions of the same make and everything is slightly different. Even though it might not look like it when you're buying it, you gotta know your calculator inside out. So you can quickly use it and you're not looking around like, oh, where is the button for this? The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is prioritization. So obviously on the math paper, there are some topics that come up every year religiously and some that may come up but might not. If you are just trying to improve your grade in maths, there are some chapters that you should just be focusing on because if you're struggling, you shouldn't be going and doing financial maths. 
and thinking, oh, this is great, I'm good at financial maths. But there's a big likelihood it just won't come up on the paper. Your big focus should be on like calculus, trigonometry, uh, algebra. If you can really knuckle these down, if you're really struggling and don't know where to start, just really try and get those chapters down and be able to answer most of the past paper questions on those topics because that is where most of the marks come from in the exam. It's from those big bulky sections and not from financial maths. I know we all love financial maths, but the likelihood of it coming up is literally 50-50. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and it helped you out a little bit. And yeah, I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye. Also guys, be sure to check out the exam revision courses and bundles. I actually have a 20% off code for you. I'll put it on the screen now. Um, they cover majority of the Leaving Cert and Junior Cert subjects. They have H1 standard notes, video lessons, presentations, quizzes, exam questions, everything you will need to succeed in the Leaving Cert and Junior Cert.